Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. On Earth, there are many tool-using creatures. From birds using tiny cactus needles to help them to spear grubs, to sea otters using stones to crack open clams, it is through the use of tools that they accomplish their goals of survival. Humans take this to a whole other level. Our tool use has developed into advanced technology that's not just about survival, but about curiosity, which allows us to cross the expanse of space and land robotic rovers on other planets. But however advanced our technology becomes, we press against limitations. Technology is a fantastic enabler, but for every tool, there is an expiration date and things it simply cannot do. However much our tools can do, will they be enough to crack one of the universe's most important mysteries? I'm Alex McColgan and you're watching Astrum, and this is the question being asked through the Perseverance rover on Mars. Its mission is to collect samples from Mars's surface that may contain proof of alien life. To discover that life can arise on planets other than our own would radically change our whole understanding of ourselves and the universe. But it is in a race against time. In the fifth video in this series, we will take a closer look at some of that technology and we'll see it in action from January 2022 until April, during the next phase of Perseverance's mission, its journey to the delta in Yezero Crater. When we last saw the Perseverance rover, it had just emerged from the shifting sands to the south of Saitar, a place filled with traps that could have spelt the end of Perseverance's mission. However, now that it was free from that dangerous terrain, it had a new target, the section of the Ezero crater which contained its delta. Since coming to Mars, Perseverance had taken many samples from what was now understood to be two distinct geological formations, Mars and Saitar. These two large bodies of rock were discovered to come from different time periods and were extremely useful in providing context to the geological history of Yezero Crater. This knowledge was in itself a tool. By understanding what Yezero's history was, scientists could pinpoint the most likely locations within the crater to find ancient remains of life. And that crucial location was the Yezero Delta. Scientists had long suspected the delta was a likely source of fossilized evidence. Billions of years ago, a large watershed many times the size of Yezero Crater itself drained into the crater. As the water traveled, it picked up pieces of rock from a massive catchment area before depositing it all into the crater. Over time, silt and sand would have buried these rocks, hopefully preserving their secrets in protective clay one of the most radiation-resistant forms of rock, ideal for preserving biological markers and complex organic molecules. If life ever existed in the waters of Yezero, it was most likely that the proof of it lay in the delta, which was why it was time for Perseverance to really start booking it. The sands of Saitar had forced Perseverance to travel with care, picking its route carefully to avoid getting trapped in any loose sand. However, the terrain outside Saitar is much smoother. This allowed Perseverance to unleash its full potential. As it traveled up and around the outside of the dunes of Saitar, Perseverance proved itself by setting the land speed record for a rover on Mars, 319.8 meters traveled in a single day. Admittedly, that does not sound very fast. The distance is only about the length of three football pitches, but this is impressive for a Mars rover. This was roughly 50% further in one day than the previous record of 220 meters set by the Opportunity rover in 2005. And bear in mind, it did all this by itself, choosing its route with its autonomous AI system, AutoNav. Being able to assess the terrain around it, on the fly and by itself, the fact it could pick out the best route to avoid obstacles and rough patches is incredible. And given that Perseverance's top speed is believed to be 120 meters per hour, Perseverance still has a lot of reserves to tap into. And Perseverance was not done there. It also completed the first multi-day drive on Mars, managing to keep driving without any input from Earth over a three-day period. This has always proved challenging for rovers, 
Usually, human intervention is required and regular updates are needed to help negate the uncertainty that always creeps into a rover's awareness of where it is. Without this intervention, it may get lost, possibly leading into dangerous areas. But Perseverance's AutoNav is able to circumvent this issue. Although some uncertainty does still creep in, Perseverance is able to keep track of its own location well enough that it can be left to run without these regular updates, potentially meaning it can be left to run over weekends or holidays without any supervision from Earth. This allows it to travel much faster and further, getting to the places where the best science can happen. Not that Perseverance wasn't doing science along the way to the Delta, it just did some of it autonomously too. Oh, and I think it's time we talked about Perseverance's heat ray, which it can use, you guessed it, autonomously. Yes, Perseverance has a heat ray, which it can decide for itself when to deploy. When I first heard about this, I began to suspect that whoever designed Perseverance had read War of the Worlds and wanted to circumvent any possible invasion of Earth by getting the first hit in. And while this isn't likely the case, Perseverance's laser, known as SuperCam, is no joke. It can heat rocks to a temperature of 10,000 degrees Celsius, melting them to plasma and vaporizing them. Before you ask, this incredible tool is designed for use in evaluating the chemical composition of rocks, not vaporizing aliens. By heating rocks up to such a temperature, the light they start to emit can be evaluated to see which chemical markers it carries. Different elements and compounds release light at different wavelengths, by seeing what light a rock emits or doesn't emit when superheated can be key in identifying its chemical composition for some on-site scientific analysis. Also, it should be noted that this is done on a very, very tiny scale. On the 11th of March 2022, Perseverance zapped one fascinatingly purple-colored rock a total of 150 times in the same spot vaporizing its outer layers to see what lay behind the surface. However, all these repeated vaporizations only bored a hole into the rock that was a single millimeter deep, hardly a weapon for fighting Martians. But these are the tools Perseverance employs as it continues its journey, working with scientists along the way to abrade and laser various samples for a little en route science. It even accidentally picked up a pet rock along the way in one of its wheels. This small stone was deemed not to hinder the rover's movements in any way, so scientists have left it be. So far, the rock has accompanied Perseverance over a distance of 8.5 kilometers over the course of four months, and has proved to be far less of a danger to its mission than the last rocks that it accidentally acquired. But with the arrival of one friend, another would begin to depart. Technology, although impressive, is not infallible. On the 3rd of May 2022, as Perseverance was reaching the end of its journey towards Yezero's Delta, communications dropped out with Ingenuity. The Ingenuity helicopter had accompanied Perseverance since the beginning of its journey, the two machines traveling together to the Red Planet and helping each other perform their different missions. Ingenuity had already amazed the world by being the first flying machine on Mars. It had scouted out the route for Perseverance during most of its mission, spotting hazards in advance so Perseverance could avoid them. But Ingenuity's intended lifespan of 30 days was already long past. Every day the helicopter still functioned was a gift, and one that could not keep giving forever. When Ingenuity first started off on its routine flight, Perseverance thought nothing of it. The two machines weren't always in line of sight with each other, instead keeping contact with frequent radio check-ins. However, when the next scheduled call should have come along, Ingenuity failed to check in. Perseverance froze in its tracks. Scientists thought desperately about what might have happened to the small helicopter. They theorized that if some kind of fault had occurred on Ingenuity, it was possible that it had gone into a safe, low-powered mode to preserve itself, thus missing its communications window, or possibly desyncing its onboard clock from Perseverance's. As such, Perseverance waited a full day, listening all the while to see if Ingenuity would wake up and start communications again. And thankfully, it did. The little helicopter was alright, 
reporting no major faults. However, its silence had been extremely worrying. It turned out that the problem was the levels of dust in Mars's air. Over time, Ingenuity's solar panels that kept its battery topped up had received less and less sunlight, causing the batteries to dip dangerously low. Thanks to the freezing cold nights on Mars, Ingenuity is only able to survive thanks to onboard heaters that keeps its components warm. Otherwise, 3's 4 weathering would ultimately prove too much for it. Ingenuity was given several days of lessened work to give its batteries more time to charge up to operational levels. However, this came at a cost. It would use its heaters less from here on. Instead of turning its heaters on when temperatures reach minus 15 degrees Celsius, Ingenuity would only turn them on at minus 40 degrees Celsius. And nights on Mars were about to get colder. Eventually, that cold will prove to be too much. Although it was relieving that Ingenuity was alright, this was a grim reminder of one unavoidable truth. Time was not on this machine's side. Eventually, dust would reduce its power absorption rates to the point where it will not be able to keep itself heated. Its batteries will run down, its components will break, and it will inevitably go silent. But that's why it's more important than ever to do what we can with the time we have left. Perseverance and Ingenuity resync their clocks and headed off once more. Ahead of them lay the Delta, the most likely place on Mars to locate signs of alien life. For now, their mission would continue. It takes a lot of mathematical skills to get a rover to work or a helicopter to fly on Mars. You need to work out sunlight levels and power percentages, air density, and weight versus thrust formulas. If you need help brushing up on mathematical skills like these, thankfully, there's the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant. Brilliant.org is full of interactive ways to learn, which for me really helps cement ideas in my mind. When I wanted to learn a little calculus, perfect for analyzing the motion of objects through the air, like a passing meteor, or the rising and falling of a Mars-based helicopter, I found his visual style of lessons to be really useful for helping me get my head around tricky concepts like derivatives. It's not just about maths though, it's a great way to practice science, computing, or other topics. Brilliant has thousands of lessons presented in bite-sized chunks that only take about 15 minutes to do, so you can really fit it in around your day. To get started for free, head on over to brilliant.org forward slash astrum. You'd better hurry. The first 200 of you to sign up will get 20% off Brilliant's annual subscription. I highly recommend it. Thanks for watching, and thanks to my patrons and members for your support. If you want to support too, check the links in the description below. All the best, and see you next time.